Yo, what's up everyone? Um, I am just making a quick little video because uh, even though I usually don't make these, um, something special happened. Wow, that's my Skype, not yours. All right, remake. So something pretty insane happened this season that I didn't expect because honestly, I don't consider myself to be that good at this game. Um, I never have and I probably never will just because, you know, I play League for fun, that's why I've always played, and that's probably why I will always play. I've never had any intentions of being rank 1 or even challenger or anything remotely close to it, let alone pro player or anything like that, so whenever I get something that for me is a big achievement, that's always a sign that uh, maybe it's time for me to make a little bit of a video. And uh, this time around, the occasion is I got to master playing only Poppy support. So uh, that was really fun and uh, it's been a bit of an adventure this season. It's been a long season for me. I've played a lot of games and uh, I've developed over the course of probably 150-ish games some decent proficiency on this champion. I know how to make myself useful in damn near any game that I play, even when my team is losing. And uh, that's probably why I ended up finding enough success to uh, to just barely get into Master. Well, I mean, I haven't played any games since I actually got Master, so who knows how far I can push it. But uh, let me just get out of this queue, actually. Give me just a second here. So this is the match history right now. Pretty lucky streak, I think. <laughs> Looking nice. Oh, and this Singed game, I mean, this is just because I, you have to queue support mid if you want actual support games to happen for you. You have to queue mid second. So Singed has been my mid lane uh, champion for like a secondary pick or whatever. Um, but really, I, I, I really did just get to master playing only Poppy. I mean, I played nothing else. And it's only support. So the, the way the story goes is I... Uh, I mained Shaco support for a while this season, and I managed to push it to Diamond 1. And then after that, I mained Ramus, and uh, while playing Ramus top lane only, I managed to get into Master Promos. I lost them 0-3, uh, so I got destroyed on the Ramus top lane, which is fine. It is what it is. Um, but I couldn't get into Master playing Ramus top because it's just not strong enough. It's just a bit of a shit pick, really. So I figured it was time to learn Poppy, so what did I do? Well, I tried her top lane and I tried her jungle, and it was so bad for me that I almost got pushed down to the rock bottom of Diamond. Um, my top lane Poppy was unbelievably bad, and I hated everything about it. I hated the way the champion worked. I hated that you're supposed to get value out of the grasp, uh, shield throw, interaction in the top lane. I didn't understand her trading pattern. I didn't understand how to use her trading pattern in relation to the enemy top laners, etc. It was just a whole mess and I lost all of my games on it. And the same thing happened in the jungle. So after trying to learn Poppy for some games and completely tanking my account, I decided that um, squeaky chair, it was time to try her in the support role, which is the least popular way to play Poppy, viably, I guess. And I tried it, and something just worked with it. There was something that just clicked, and it has some serious problems, but it's useful enough to get me to master, and I'm not the best player in the world, so if it can do that for me, maybe it can do some great things for other people as well. Especially considering that I didn't even use it as a counter pick. It's literally all I played, so um, if I can main it to master, then I think like actually good people at the game, like grandmaster players, could probably use it as like a counter pick to um, to mobility or to uh, dashing champions, which is originally the idea behind Poppy support. Anyway, let's get into the drafting phase. So the way that I uh, approach draft on this champion, I just Permaban Lulu, because Lulu's polymorph turns your champion into a cannon minion, basically. Well, not exactly. You're actually easier to kill than a cannon minion. <laughs> so Lulu has to be banned. And uh, beyond that, I also learned it to eventually dodge Kale and Karthus, because they are just 
champions that you can't really stop them as poppy support. You have effectively no way of shutting them down. Um, and you don't have enough agency in the early game to just decide that you and your jungler are just going to invade them and kill them. And even if you do that, it might not work, etc, etc. So the problem with those two champions and the reason I perma-dodge them is because um, if you can't stop them, then they will eventually scale into a hyper-damaging monster weapon. Um, so that's why I dodge Kale and Karthus. I haven't had problems with anything else. Actually, that's not true. Sona has been a huge issue. So if you want to dodge like anything bad on this champion, or if you want to use it as a counter pick, uh, don't play it into Sona. I don't think I've ever won a poppy game against Sona. I have one lane into it, uh, which is not guaranteed, by the way. So you might even lose lane against Sona. But the problem with Sona is the same as the other ones. Even if you should win lane into Sona as Poppy support, which probably you will not, but even if you do, uh, you can make the Sona go 0 and 10 in lane and it doesn't really matter because as long as her Nexus hasn't exploded, she's still gonna get a tier of the Goddess, she's still gonna get one or two items with a few levels, and eventually she just giga outscales anyone else in the entire game and heals her way to victory because you can't you can't out damage and you can't out value with your crowd control the sheer amount of healing that sona brings to the table in my experience so but uh, the reason i don't have sona on my dodge list is just because no one picks it <laughs> so i don't have to deal with it that much but if i if it was meta and people actually played it i don't know why people don't play sona i mean they should it's turbo broken but if people actually played what's turbo broken, then yes, I would dodge Sona. So that's the draft phase for you. As for summoner spells, I just run Flash Ignite because you're playing Poppy, so you have to have the Flash so you can get the angles for your wall stun. Which brings us to the first weakness of Poppy support. Poppy's crowd control is conditional. That's her biggest weakness. Because it's conditional, uh, you will sometimes not be able to do anything about a person that just walks up to you and outranges you and harasses you. And you will find this happening against a lot of enchanters in lane. And the most prominent example of it is when you play against Senna. The reason I don't actually dodge or ban Senna is because somehow I always manage to win lane against her anyway. Which, to be honest, is probably because if you find a wall stun on the Senna's AD carry, she can't really stop you from killing that person. So I think that's why I just win against her anyway. And also, Senna players are very arrogant with their positioning in general, so you can punish them fairly easily. Especially if your jungler comes around. But it is a big weakness for Poppy that her, you have to get a wall stun with your heroic charge to actually lock someone down. And uh, that's why Poppy support was originally thought of as a counter pick. It was supposed to counter uh, Leona, Alistar, Pike, all of those kind of dashing uh, supports that want to initiate on your AD carry. You can actually just press W on Poppy and it procs your Aftershock. And it turns the enemy support's crowd control into a self CC instead, which is a huge deal and uh, pretty much negates any initiation. So that's why it's such a good counter pick for some of those matchups. Now, of course, if you don't have vision or if you have bad reactions, even an, an Alistar can actually just uh, destroy a Poppy support. So you have to be pretty dominant with your brush control against those kind of champions. Even if you are technically a counter pick, uh, you still have to you still have to know how to play against them. And uh, if they ever catch you off guard, or you just have slow reaction times, or you play on 60 ping, um, you will not win those matchups either. So <laughs> you have to know what you're doing, basically, is what I'm saying, regardless of uh, the matchup. But yeah, there are a couple of matchups that are just genuinely unplayable that, you, in my opinion, you should never pick Poppy support into it. Um, uh, and that's, that's where I'm talking about the Lulu... Uh, that I'm permabanning, and you can argue for Sona Soraka as well, in my opinion. I also think that Renata specifically is a tough matchup, but again, it's mostly due to her range. Uh, her ultimate is not actually that bad for you, because you don't 
really kill your AD carry if it procs on you and Poppy starts auto-attacking her AD carry, it's that barely does anything at all. But it's still a tough matchup. Let's get into the runes, actually, which is what we've been looking at this entire time. Okay, so uh, I run Aftershock. Now keep in mind, this is before the durability patch, which has already hit. So all of this, everything that I achieved on this pick was before the durability patch. And the reason this matters is because I just want you to take the information that I'm giving you with a little bit of a grain of salt, because these things can change when the, uh, when the foundation of the game itself changes. Um, but I still believe that even, even on the durability patch, a lot of this stuff should still have, like, around the same value. So, I still have things to say, and it should still be useful information. Basically, you have two choices for your keystone. It's Electrocute, or it's Aftershock. I ran Aftershock, but I just want to go over why Electrocute is also an option. I don't think Electrocute is as good, because when you initiate with Electrocute, there's a real risk that you will get counter-initiated on and just killed outright. So that's the downside of it, and that's why I don't run it. But some people run it, and when they do, um, it usually looks something like this. So the benefit of Electrocute, and the reason that I'm bringing it up, is that uh, you can surprise people with the, the limits of your champion when you have this rune. Um, if you're gonna go Electrocute, I would probably go double Adaptive Force in my mini runes and run it something like this would, is probably what I would run in most games, unless they have double AP bot lane, so you go the MR version there. But the, the point of Electrocute is that you just surprise people, and if you ever catch them with any wall stun with your heroic charge, it's pretty likely that you can burst them down and kill them with a teammate, just because you have Electrocute. The other benefit of Electrocute is that you gain, you get access to Relentless Hunter. And the reason this is a big deal is because even out of combat movement speed is a huge thing for Poppy. Uh, it allows you to get around the map faster so you can roam more easily and be in position for fights faster when something breaks out, uh, which is a big deal. But what's also important is that if you're looking for a wall stun and you're not in combat, the extra movement speed helps you actually find the correct angle for that and uh, anything in the game that relates to movement speed is automatically a big deal for Poppy, because movement is the most important part of this champion, and that's simply because of the interaction with your heroic charge and the walls on Summoner's Rift. If you get the wrong angle and you think it's the right angle, and you press E on someone, your champion just goes in and dies. That's the way it works. So you need to have enough movement speed to get the correct angle to where you're actually stunning someone so that you're not killing yourself with your own initiations and so that you can kill the person you're trying to assassinate with the or catch out or poke down or, you know, trading with people, whatever it is. So that's why Electrocute is viable. And here's what I do. Aftershock is what I run. And I would imagine that this is what you run after the durability patch as well, assuming that Poppy support is viable at all after the durability patch, which, to be fair, it might not be. But I think it, it still would be. I don't think it would change uh, that much. The reason why it might not be is just because Poppy support does rely on her base damage to burst people down, and if everyone's tankier, then that obviously is a lot less valuable, and she turns into more of a utility champion rather than a utility and damage champion. But of course, the durability patch makes you tankier as well, which ups the value of Aftershock. And the durability patch also uh, ups the value of your W, I believe, because your W passive is a resist-oriented passive, which means you're going to have stronger effective health with it. And you're going to have stronger effective health with... Well, literally anything that gives you either resistances or health just because of the patch itself. So Aftershock is super valuable. It is the only thing that I really run if I'm getting serious on this champion because when you initiate on someone with Aftershock, they can't counter-initiate on you. They can't just turn on you and kill you instantly. That's the reason why this rune is so good. You can even initiate fights late game because of this rune, because if you catch someone on a wall in the jungle in a late game fight, you can just catch them on that wall, maybe do a little combo, and run away and you will probably survive the fight because you ran away quickly, and that's because you have Aftershock. 
So that's why this rune is so valuable. Another little tip that I would like to give you, a little trick for Aftershock, is that um, you can actually E to a minion in order to close the distance on an opponent. So if you want to close the distance on an opponent who you know is going to dash away, you don't have to dash to them with your E and then push them away from your teammate that is trying to kill them. For example, if I'm running top lane and I'm ganking the enemy Camille, am I going to E into the Camille? Well, maybe, but that depends on the angle. But I might just E to a minion that's next to her instead, so I can E to the minion, and then when she uses her, her hook shot to try and get away from me and my top laner, I press W and it turns into a self CC. And then, because I have Aftershock, she can't turn on me and kill me because my W procs the Aftershock as well. So you're not going to get squishy just because you don't use your E on an enemy champion if you can still proc your W. Because Aftershock procs on both your W and your E, which is really, really helpful and allows for some pretty sick outplays, um, which can matter. You know, it, I know it's detail work, I know it's these are small things, but all of this stuff matters when you're playing in like decent ELO games with people who actually know what they're doing. So as for the second rune, I always run Font of Life. Uh, some people are crazy enough to run Shield Bash. I think it's a waste. Uh, because you're a support, and this is not a support rune. And uh, your other option is Demolish. Demolish is great for when you want to just capitalize on winning a 2v2 in the bot lane. The problem with running it is that uh, how are you going to win a 2v2 in the bot lane in the first place if you don't have Font of Life? That's my question. But they're both viable, so you know it's kind of personal preference. I just like Font better. And uh, as for these, I always ran Bone Plating. I don't know if the patch is going to make conditioning more valuable. Um, I'm not sure. But I'm, I know that all three of them are viable regardless. Conditioning is viable. It's just not going to help you in lane at all. Uh, Second Wind is going to help you in lane. And Bone Plating is going to help you in lane. I like Bone Plating the best. I just think it's a reliable and good difference maker. So you don't get destroyed in lane too easily. And then I also run the unflinching because I think tenacity is OP and I think not running tenacity is kind of troll. Alternatively, you can run overgrowth, but again, I just like unflinching better. Even if I'm buying Merc Treads, I still think unflinching is value. And for your secondaries, you can actually go into domination if you want because you can catch the relentless hunter rune uh, that we talked about when we talked about electrocute. You can still pick this for your secondaries. I've seen some people do it on Poppy support, but when they do this, they actually run Boots of Swiftness with Relentless Hunter because uh, it's all about the maximum move speed possible. Um, and it's a bit of a different build because the people who do that don't run Turbo Chem Tank because you don't need Turbo Chem Tanks active if you're already running both Relentless Hunter and Boots of Swiftness. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a choice between like how you want to combine your items and your runes and all that. But for me, I like to get tank boots, meaning I get plated or mercs. So that's why I don't run the domination. Also, I found that the domination tree uh, puts your flash on too long of a cooldown. And this is the reason I'm running Inspiration Secondary. Ultimately, it's not for the biscuits. The biscuits are super nice. The extra mana is super nice. I love it. But you could also run Hex Flash instead of the Biscuits if you really wanted to. Hex Flash is good because it's just another way for you to surprise people and close the distance. And like I said, movement and distance, that's what Poppy's support is all about. So anything that helps is, is useful. But I do like my Biscuits just for safety. And then this is the kicker, right? Cosmic Insight gives you Summoner Haste. This rune is probably about as valuable to you as your actual keystone, just because Poppy's flash is unbelievably important to her. I'm going to be completely honest and say this. The only real reason I was able to get to master on this pick is because on Poppy, you can do snap initiations that catches people out instantly. Obviously, you need them to be next to a wall for it to happen, but if they are next to a wall, you flash stun them, and if your team is nearby, the person will die. That's the way it works. And uh, Cosmic Insight is, for me, 
absolutely mandatory on Poppy for that exact reason. Not to mention, there are some situations on this champion where you will go in and you need to flash out. Or, even if you don't go in, maybe you just get ganked or surprised, or you do a misplay or something, You're, maybe you do a bad rotation, whatever it is, or you overplay your hand for some vision or whatever, you are a support after all. Whatever the case, having the ability to flash out and not feel bad because you just wasted a 5 minute cooldown is so important on this particular champion. If I play Poppy and I can trade my flash initiation play for a flash on the enemy mid lane victor, I will do it 10 times out of 10 because he's a mid lane, he's a victor, and he can be punished without his flash, not only that, but I'm a support, so my flash is usually not as important, although in the case of Poppy you can argue that it is. But because I'm running Cosmic Insight, I know that I'm trading a low cooldown flash for a high one, which is always worth it. So that's why Cosmic Insight is so important to me. It's actually so important that for a while I was thinking about experimenting with Ionian Boots, just to get the flash cooldown even lower. But I realized that due to Poppy's W and due to how much you're actually taking damage throughout the game, tank boots are just more reliable for me. Because, you know, if you buy tank boots, it allows you to play the game and not die, which is, it turns out that's very important for winning games. <laughs> anyway, so uh, mini runes, I just run adaptive for your maximum threat for your combo, um, because ability haste is not as important on this champion as just having like extra damage and um, and movement. I think movement and damage is more important than haste on Poppy specifically. And then you can you can do the standard thing, which is you run double adaptive. Uh, I used to do that, but I found that when I when I run double adaptive, I always have to think in champ select about what the enemy bot lane is, and it, in the long run, it became an insane headache because sometimes the enemy draft would just be five flex picks or like four three or four flex picks and when that happens you don't know who's gonna go bot lane it can look like they will run an ad carry bot lane and then it's uh, zaya mid lane and syndra ad carry and now your runes are just screwed because you ran double adaptive with armor and you're playing against double ap bot lane even though it didn't look like that in draft that has happened to me this season countless times and it got to the point where i just decided you know what the extra damage is not worth it because it just steals kills from my ad carry anyway i'm just going to run both mr and armor for my mini runes so that's what i did you don't have to do that but that's just what worked for me uh and people are very disgusting with their very disgusting with their flex picks and their drafts in uh in Diamond Plus games, in my experience, they will do damn near anything to get a favorable matchup and screw over your runes. So this is my item set. This is the set that I run for Poppy. As you can see, I have starting items and consumables up top. I also have my boots listed here. The special thing about Poppy support, the way that I play her, is that I actually prioritize refillable and corrupting potion in some of my games. Um, pretty much no other support on the planet buys Corrupting Potion, and uh, there's a reason for that. It's because it's expensive, and when you're a support, 500 gold is a substantial portion of your income. So it gets difficult to dedicate that much money to what is effectively supposed to be a starting item. But I don't care. Uh, well, I do care, but in some games, I don't care. If I'm playing against brand support, if I'm playing against a poke lane, or if I just happen to be recalled with 600 gold so I can perfectly rush a Corrupting Potion with a Control Ward, I will actually do that. I will get Corrupting Potion in those matchups, and I will get Corrupting Potion in the games where I know for a fact that it's going to win me the game. And that's because Corrupting Potion it becomes a huge difference maker, because not only does it become your only answer to actual poke lanes, because Poppy doesn't have sustain, she has the shield, but the shield is not real sustain. You're gonna get poked out. It's just a fact. If you've played the game, if you know what the game feels like, the actual gameplay, you know that Poppy does not have real sustain. She absolutely needs Corrupting Potion to survive, uh, to survive and thrive in certain lanes. And not only that, but the burn damage is also helpful because it adds to your combo, which is very nice. It's a small deal, but it can actually be a difference maker in some cases. And it will net you kills and net your AD carry kills that you otherwise wouldn't get if you were just 
buying standard support items like everyone else. So that's why Corrupting Potion is so unbelievably good on this champion. You know, you're not playing Alistar. You don't have a heal that just sits passively in your kit. So that's why it's so valuable. And also it allows you to have stronger staying power. You know, as the game goes forward, as you go into the mid game and the late game and the laning phase is over, um, maybe some skirmishes and some team fights and people get caught out and you know, it's solo queue. It's a mess. Of course it's a mess. Everything's a mess in solo queue. And Corrupting Potion is just a huge, I don't know what to call it, but it's like a rubber band that can allow you to do things that you're not supposed to do basically. And that's just because it allows you to stay on the map for so long on a champion that really has no business staying on the map at all. Uh, I also have oracles and control ward listed here and then the two boots that I use. Um, I just want to show you guys the setup for poppy support that uh, other people do sometimes. I've seen uh, this is the boots of swiftness relentless hunter setup that I talked about earlier. Uh, people actually just run a build that looks like this. So if it was full build, then it would eventually look probably like this, right? So people get, they get boost of swiftness with Relentless Hunter, and then they do the standard DMP into Locket. Uh, this is an option. It does give you a lot of mobility. And like I said, the downside of that is that you either have to say goodbye to Aftershock or you have to say goodbye to Cosmic Insight. I have played this setup a lot myself. Um, I did like it, but I found that the Cosmic Insight one with Aftershock is actually just better. So that's why I run Turbo Chem Tank. Now, because I run Turbo Chem Tank, I don't feel that I necessarily need to have Boots of Swiftness or Boots of Mobility on my champion in order for her to function. So because I don't need Boots of Mobility or Swiftness in the long run, since I'm getting Chem Tank anyway, it's a very balanced build if the game goes long enough. I just run the tank boots, and it honestly helps so much against so many things. Merc Treads is incredibly valuable. If you've ever played Poppy support against Fiddlesticks Jungle at any point, you will understand that you just have to buy this item in certain games. Like, you playing against Twisted Fate mid lane, you have to have this. Uh, it's mandatory, because without it, you're gonna get locked down for 5-6 seconds at a time from a distance from non-committal CC on the enemy team, and it's impossible to deal with. I've actually had games where because I bought Merc Treads against champions like Fiddlesticks, I got initiated on, and then I was able to counter-initiate with a wall stun just because of the tenacity on this item. And counter-initiating with that wall stun procced my aftershock and won us the team fight, which won us the game. So I'm not kidding when I'm telling you this item is literally a game-winning item, potentially. Now, of course, there are some situations where plated steel caps is just a must-have as well. If you're playing against Senna bot lane, it's likely double AD bot lane plus any potential attack damage that they might have on their entire topside trio, like on the draft. Uh, plated steel caps is just so valuable in those kind of situations. So that's why I like the tank boots so much. Usually I will rush a dead man's plate because this is the item that gives you the most movement speed in the game, uh, reliably, no matter what situation you're in. So it's just a really nice item. It does happen to be an armor item though. So my most common combination is actually Merc Treads into DMP and then the rest of the build. Uh, because Merc Treads will give you that little hint of magic resist uh, that makes you not get one shot by anything and everything that looks in your general direction. Whereas if you run Steel Caps into Dead Man's, which can be viable and you can do that, um, you can become quite punishable, unfortunately, if you're playing against uh, some AP champions. But after Dead Man's, it's Turbo Camp Tank. It's just more movement speed, more tankiness, more goodness. There's nothing bad about this item, honestly. The only thing you lose from running Camp Tank is that you don't have a shield from your locket, uh, which, who cares? I mean, I don't care. It's more movement speed. It wins me games. And if the game goes long enough, theoretically, uh, most of the time it will not, but theoretically you're going to get... Uh, force of nature, which you can then pivot into a ward stone eventually, so you can still keep buying control wards throughout the entire game. And of course the elixir would be elixir of iron. 
extremely rarely have I had actual games where it went so far that I got Elixir of Iron and everything else. Um, but it has happened. I have played those games out. And when you get to those games, it's surprising how big you get at the end. Not just the size from the Elixir, but I mean, like, your your beefiness is big. I mean, you you end up with, like, 4,000 health on this champion as a su support, which is pretty crazy. Especially because um, when you talk about Poppy as a top laner or as a jungler, you, you're always talking about how poorly she scales. She wins early and mid-game. She's a terrible scaling champion. But I actually find that, as a support, her scaling is a complete non-issue. It only becomes an issue when you're playing against hyperscaling champions specifically, which is exactly why I talked about dodging Kale, dodging Karthus, why it's so hard to deal with Sona, um, and why you can make a similar argument for Soraka, even though Soraka is easier to catch out in my experience. Because Soraka players are always, they're always posturing forward for some reason, so they're like, relatively easy to assassinate. Well, that depends. There are some Soraka players that are actually really good. And I have lost against that as well. But that is just to say that support Poppy, in practice, it has very little problems with scaling, at least for my money. And I also made a post on Reddit about uh, how I got to master on, on this champion, on this pick in the support role. So I think I'm gonna bring up the Reddit page for myself and just uh, answer some of the questions that I got there and put it in this video as well. All right, so you guys probably can't see this um, because I don't have it set up on my OBS, but I'm on the uh, Poppy Mains Reddit. So I'm just gonna go through some questions. Uh, here's a guy asking, what's your play style against long range poke comps like Caitlyn Lanes, etc.? And do you have any dirty tricks? Yeah, the trick there is the thing about uh, corrupting potion that I talked about. If you can pair an initiation like with your jungler, or if they just, if you can catch them against the wall, it's pretty much always worth it for you to trade your flash for the 80 carries flash. So if you can force an initiation that like really scares them, if you can surprise people and scare them, then you can get through poke lanes. Definitely, you can. How do you play against Senna or Swain? Those are my hardest matchups because of the CC and the poke. Yeah, I already talked about the Senna. Uh, Senna players can be punished because their position is not perfect. Uh, I recommend getting a sweeper from level one against it. So you you do the classic the classic thing where you put down a ward on the map somewhere. It almost doesn't even matter where, as long as it's useful, right? You just put down a ward at like 40 to 50 seconds into the game, and then you recall and purchase a sweeper. And the reason you purchase a sweeper is because it allows you to face check. Uh, bushes in lane, well, sort of face check them. You can approach them without face checking them fully, so you can walk away without getting killed necessarily, but it's also because uh, when you do have bush, uh, brush control, the sweeper allows you to get full control of the lane, because if they step up in lane and you have swept the bush, uh, you can wall stun them and kill them. So that's why the Sweeper is such a good tip against uh, stuff like Senna and Swain. I do it every game, actually, the level 1 thing with the Trinket Ward, uh, uh, recall into Sweeper and all that. I do that almost every game, because it's just so generally valuable. Uh, as for Swain, he is very, very difficult. Uh, the pull is a nightmare, and it's also a nightmare for your AD carry. The experience that I have against Swain is that he is easiest to deal with when you don't force initiations on him without your jungler. Basically what I do is try not to get pulled, try not to feed, and just... It sounds weird, but just be patient and, like, scale. I know we've talked about Poppy as, like, not a scaling champion, but again, I find that on, on support, that's just not the issue. The issue with Poppy is not whether you scale or not, it's whether you can find useful crowd control that helps your team win fights as the game moves forward. And waiting for your jungler and playing with your jungler, going with your jungler and initiating with them, um, you know, it's all a matter of timing and... I find that that's the best way to play against a lot of stuff, including Swain. Even though it's a tough matchup, you're, you're right, it is tough. <laughs> Somebody's asking about my skins, let me just... <laughs> I think I have two skins that I run. Um, Star Guardian is my default. I don't own a lot of skins, just in general. 
Yeah, so there's Battle Regalia. I don't love it because the thing that sticks out from her helmet in the game looks really weird to me. I don't like that. And then I have Star Guardian. It's the only other skin that I have, so that's the one that I play. Somebody is mentioning Tristana. I just want to say that, like, Poppy is not only a counter pick against other supports, okay? So if you're not going to main her, if you're not going to one-trick her the way that I do, you can still pick her if the enemy team just has dashes in general. I mean, if they have a Camille top lane, if they have Yasuo or Yone on the team, you know, if they have Tristana AD carry, if they have um, Samira AD carry, the, the, there's so many champions in the game. It's an unbelievable number of champions that exist in League that actually have one or several dashes. So it's not just like a support counter, you know, you don't have to limit yourself to picking Poppy because they have Leona Pike or whatever. Poppy is the kind of champion where sometimes what I'll do is if I see that the enemy is using or about to use their um, their dashing ability or their jump, I will literally just press W and flash into them. Like, forget about the E, forget about the charge and the walls, screw all that. Like, sometimes you literally just run at people with your W and flash into them, and it, it, it CCs them and it will kill them. Because if a Tristana is trying to jump, and you W flash into her jump, she's just done for. She can't do anything about it. And uh, another detail to that, that that I can speak from with, with regards to gameplay is uh, Orn is another top laner that is just beautiful. If you pick Poppy support and they have Orn top lane, it's absolutely beautiful what happens because he actually can't use the second part of his ulti against you. As long as your W is on top of him, uh, his champion is worthless, effectively. There are a lot of champions in the game where it's like, ooh, they have a Kha'Zix jungle, they have a Rengar, like, there, there's a real reason why I was able to find some success on this pick, pretty much regardless of what I was playing against. Here's a question, do you ever take Hex Flash over Biscuit Insight? Uh, personally, I don't run it, but I know that it's strong and I know that it's a real option, and if you want to experiment with Hex Flash, uh, you should do it. And honestly, I could start experimenting with it as well, because you have to remember this whole thing about like buying the occasional refillable potion, buying the occasional corrupting potion. I mean, if you're running corrupting anyway, why do you really need the biscuits, right? Maybe you don't. And maybe that's just another opportunity for Hex Flash viability, when you think about it. Uh, here's a guy asking about Ionian Boots, I already mentioned, um, I don't think it's worth it in relation to, or in comparison to, just running the survivability options for Boots. This could change on the patch, though. So yeah, those are all the questions that I got from the post, and I guess that's the guide. I mean, that was a lot to talk about, but I wanted to make it an extensive guide, just because this is one of the few specific, weird, like, off-meta picks that I actually have uh, real experience on. So, actually, let me see if I can find something interesting from our match history and just, like, check what I, what I played against here. So here's an example, right? This is my latest game. Uh, I played horribly, I remember this one. I did not play well this game, but if you notice, even if I'm not playing particularly well, you can see that my team is, like, really carrying the Silas was amazing, the Kiana was great, the Aatrox was great. As long as I remain useful in the game, even in a game like this, I can still destroy the Tristana in a late game situation. I can still destroy a Talon who's trying to get away and jumping over a billion walls and trying to steal Baron or whatever. I can always threaten these two guys, right? Yeah, I remember this one. This is another great example of Poppy support being completely surprising and useful uh, when she shouldn't be. Like, they have four champions that are not dashing champions, including a Yumi, which completely outscales Poppy support in theory, because her heals are too much, right? But the Yumi in this game was sitting on her biggest win condition the entire game, outside of laning phase, which in this case was in fact the Yone and the Yone gets destroyed by me. In the entire mid game in this game, I was just running at the Yone and just waiting for my team to capitalize and kill both him and Yumi. That's what this entire game was. I was literally just running at Yone. And you can see my score is pretty decent and we won the game. 16 kills on that Evelyn, by the way, holy moly. So 
even if there's only one champion on the enemy team, I still will find a way to hunt them down and destroy them. Here's another game that's a great example. We're playing against a Karthus, and I couldn't dodge this lobby because it was in my promos, so I had to play it out. So what do I do? Well, they have an Akshan, and he's an invisibility champion. So if I can find him, not only do I spot him out and prevent him from assassinating my team, I can also kill him because my W, my w stops his uh, grapple hook thing. And if I want to play defensively and I don't want to overextend myself, forget about the Akshan. I don't have to overextend myself for him. Maybe I just sit back and counter the Leona's initiations. So I find that in most of my games, even if I get counterpicked in support, there's an opportunity to do something useful. This was the Renata matchup that I complained about earlier. She is not easy to play against at all, by the way, and the lane is not always great. But they have Nidalee Urgot, so they have a top side that I can just run around and make sure that if they ever want to do anything proactively in the game, they have to get through my W to do it, and they can't do it. So we just win the game. Look who has the most deaths on their team. Is it my laning opponents because I'm smashing them? No, it's the people who have dashes because I'm playing poppy support. That's the way this pick works. You have to seek people out. You have to target the person that your W counters and just stop them from playing the game. Turn the map into a 5v4 or a 3v5 or whatever. Those are the best examples that I can talk about from the gameplay from my match history. So thanks for watching. I hope it was it was, uh, it was fun and uh, have a good one. Peace.